Good morning and welcome. On the church calendar, this is Maundy Thursday. This is the Thursday before Easter. Maundy is derived from the Latin word command and refers to Jesus' commandment to the disciples, love one another as I have loved you. It is also the day many churches hold a communion service. Tonight, I hope you will join the church by video to share communion. This video will be available at 7 p.m. You should get an email or find it on Facebook. Just find some bread and crackers and some grape juice, tea or water, and follow along as we remember our Lord Jesus. Now for the morning minute. I'm often in discussion with folks about God's will for their lives. Whenever a job changes on the horizon or courtship is getting close to a lifetime commitment or even at times of death when a spouse or a child are, are floundering with what's next and what is God's will for them. These are big moments folks want direction, but, but there are a lot of little daily moments that bring up this question. While you and I were sitting in our homes longing for connection and cleaning out those closets for the umpteenth time, you know, to find room for all that toilet paper, we might be considering what God's will is for our lives right now. With all this uncertainty, what am I to do, you might ask? In a word, prepare. When I look back on these moments and how I spent this precious time, my hope is that I've used it well, perhaps as a Sabbath time, to rest and prepare for whatever comes next. Prepare, preparing seems obvious as we read the Bible. We read in Matthew 6, it, it's explicit, seek first the kingdom. In Proverbs 3, we find this message, in all your ways acknowledge him. You may be asking, prepare for what? What am I preparing for? This passage today gives us, many of us, sequestered in our homes, direction on this question. It also directs those working essential jobs with their attitudes as they risk infection for the health and the safety of others. The story is about the sheep and the goats. You're probably familiar. It's in Matthew 25. We're going to begin in verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, He will sit on His glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before Him and He will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I, I was sick, and you looked after me. I was a prisoner, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whenever you did it for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed into eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or need clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, truly I tell you, Whatever you did not do for the least of these, you did, you did not do it for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Wow, what an imposing passage. 
directing us all that if we expect to be on the right hand of God, his good side, then giving and forgiving and serving are imperatives. It's his will and a significant part of seeking the kingdom in keeping with knowing and following Jesus. When we're seeking first the kingdom of God, heaven, it is not only to acknowledge God, it's it's doing what God does. It's steeping our lives in those initiatives that God commands us to do, initiatives that He is already doing. This is the will of God. You might say the general will of God. I know that most folks are looking for direction for the specific will of God on specific issues. I often try to direct folks to ask themselves, what am I doing about the general will of God, giving, forgiving, and serving people? By living into the general will of God, I think his specific will becomes clearer. So for folks staying at home, prepare. And for folks out there doing essential work, thank you. And may you all know that knowing Christ and your efforts on behalf of others, well, you might just find yourself at the right hand of God one day. Be blessed and be a blessing. Amen.